All right, so next up we have the Catalan, which um, which of course is this opening with like d4, knight f6, knight f3, let's say e6, c4, d5, g3. And in some order you basically fion, 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 keto your bishop on this long diagonal and castle your king. Sorry, I was having an emotional moment. We, we put my opening on, on legendary status. Um, well, so, yeah, it's been only for intermediates. Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and they're not they're not the biggest uh, demographic of, of chess players anymore. Uh, okay, so fun little story about the Catalan. Mm -hmm. uh, I made a vi again. I've, I've been making these like ten minute opening videos, which are helpful for for beginners and intermediate players. Uh, and I actually called the Catalan the Catalan setup. Okay. So uh -huh. not, but theoretically speaking. This you're right. This is exactly the way the Catalan works. You can't play the Catalan against the King's Indian. It's not called the Catalan. It's just right. G3 Bishop G2. Mm -hmm. um, and th the point is that this setup with G3 Bishop G2 is still extremely solid. Again, it's that, like yeah. very yeah. It's like good against anything. But the ideas behind it are less concrete. If that makes like if that makes sense for true. the viewers. True. True. Um, mm -hmm you can get this set up and then you just have not, no idea what to do because positional pressure isn't something intermediate players fully grasp, you know, like, okay, I'm going to sacrifice this pawn, but I'm going to get, you know, knight e5, knight c4. And then like, for example, how do you deal with this? Like the closed Catalan with c6. Yeah. It's not so simple to get like a full game. So that's, that's what I think about it. Yeah. I, I kind of, I kind of agree. I mean, I think it's very playable. But I don't think it's the ideas are straightforward. So where where would you put it, Levy? Uh it's solid, but it's not legendary. Um, you know, it might. I'm I'm thinking it might only be like top tier but, legit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because even though you get it, it's not clear what you do after. You know what I mean? Like right, you... right. Yeah, I think it's mm. top tier legit for me. Okay. Okay. I just I, I don't know, like I could be solid, but you're you're right that like the plans afterwards are not um um uh, two two and eight legit. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, so next up we have the Chigorin defense, which uh which of course I mean it's from Black's point of view, so D four, D five, C four knight to C six. Now mm-hmm. No, I was gonna just say that uh, I, I I like this a lot. It's a very good anti queen's gambit weapon. The problem mm -hmm. is that again, you don't always get this if they play knight f three. You could try to get it, but uh, you won't always get it. I yes, like it. but but the reason I was gonna say that I like it is I think if you're gonna look to play the Alban counter gambit with e five on move two, it goes mm -hmm. hand in hand because if white plays knight f three, you can play knight c six. So I feel like you should play, if you're gonna play the Chigorin, you play mm -hmm. the Chigorin in conjunction with the Alban. You try to play both of them. Like, yeah, because we talk kind of how you do it. We we try to tell beginners not to put like knights like this in queen spawn openings because it's not good. You should play c five. But uh, if you if you have this, like you can even play you know ridiculous stuff with f six g five against the London mm -hmm. bishop g four queen d seven. No, not queen d six. Uh, queen d seven. Right. Like this. Uh, yeah, it's a good fighting weapon. I think it's I think it's more solid than the. Uh, I, than the I Catalan. Mean, yeah, I, I think I totally agree. I think it belongs in solid. It's not legendary, but it's definitely better than legit. Yeah. Um, yeah. If if you guys need a weapon against something like very solid, you should consider the Chagorin defense. Right. Okay. So next up, we've got what the close Sicilian. Yep. So what do you think? So of course, e4, c5, usually something like knight c3, knight c6, and pawn to g3, followed by bringing the bishop out, bringing yeah. the knight out to e2 or f3, and casting the king. Out of the center of the board. What do you think, Bobby? So, so this is the first opening that I learned uh, mm -hmm. uh, because I had I had the book uh, openings for white and black explained when I was like six and seven, uh, and I was gonna say that it seemed like it went out of fashion, and now mm -hmm. people don't know what to do against this. Like, true. People just. I don't know what's going on. Like I played close Sicilian a lot during the speed run up through E4, and right. people just have no idea what to do. They just get overrun with these pawns. Right on the king side, yeah, totally. So you guys need to beat the Sicilian. Also, I like played this for example. You know, like any line where you play Bishop B5 and take, 
people just get terrible positions. Like for example, um, there's like this line. Have you have you seen this? Like this? This I have not seen. No. I so I saw um, Yasser Kusada Perez. The his name is not Yasser. His name is Unie. No, no, no. Unieski has a younger brother named Yasser. Oh, oh, actually, I think we've had this discussion before. Yes, sorry, yeah, yeah, we, we did. We did. We did. Before. Okay, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we've had this discussion. Yeah. So, you know, Black plays three Tempe to get the knight but uh, mm -hmm. for the, the bishop, but has no development. You just go D4. Like, you right. just go like this, and you get, like, a huge center. And um, uh -huh. I think close Sicilian lines are a great way to throw off Sicilian but players. But it's not a close Sicilian, I don't think, if you play. Well, not anymore, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this but, also just transposed into a classic Ross Lima or Black with E5, Queen to 3, H6. So, like, they're just mainline theory. There's just a Bishop B5 check uh, against the uh, Nidorf setup. Really? Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the exact, exact same thing because, like, normally it goes like this. Um, and Black plays like Knight D7, White goes like D4, you take, Queen D4, A6 takes. Like castles e5, queen d3, h6. I mean, it's slightly different because the bishop on d7 versus c8, but I mean, it's essentially the same thing. Huh. Okay. Well, um, I don't think intermediates are going to play this. Well, yeah, yeah, no, no, of course. I mean, also, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tangent because the close ceiling is just pawn to g3. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. It's just knight c3 with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I think it's legendary status. Really? Yeah, no, actually, I, I think I kind of agree. I, I don't think it's at the top of legendary, but I think it's probably bottom. It's it's probably middle to lower lower tier legendary. But you're right because the setup is always the same. It's literally the exact same setup every time with white. So so yeah, I think that's where it belongs. Um, okay, next we have the crab, which I've heard of, I've heard about this, but I haven't I haven't wasted my time looking it up on Google. You want to tell me what the crab is, Levy? Yeah, it's when you go to the beach and get too close to the marine life. Uh, it's uh, no, it's 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 a four and uh, h four. And if you would like to play the <laughs> king crab, uh -huh. if you'd like to play the king crab, the king crab is when you also play e three and king e two. Oh, okay, o okay, okay. So it's <laughs> but but king crab costs more, right? Of when course, you, it's bigger. When, you go, it's when bigger. you go to Red Lobster, I think King Crab costs more than 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 just normal. So like, um, yes. So yeah. Yes. So so okay. Um. All right. Okay. Well, I don't know. What do you think, Lavi? Uh man, I want to buy into the memes, but it's not a very good opening, and I don't want to teach bad habits. So maybe not. It's just garbage for me. Okay. It's just garbage. All right um all right so next up we have the danish gambit which is um let me flip the board which is uh e4 e5 d4 takes pawn to c3 so what do you think Lavi? i really like this this has won me a lot of games and uh they were all against people rated around the rating that we're looking at today like 1200 to 1800 over the course mm -hmm. of the e4 climb i got a lot of e4 e5s and I was playing different gambits, like, you know, D4 here, C3, sometimes mm -hmm. the triple gambit. Uh, it's really good. It's this really good. not and, as good, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, but people just don't know the theory. Mm -hmm. Like, they just don't know it. True. Uh, it's probably a high tier legit. It's not entirely solid, right? Because you showed the main line once in, like, black Yeah, is... I mean, I, I don't... Like, you're a coach, and I'm not, so I, I don't know what the approach is in general, but I feel like coaches, if you're teaching your students to play E5 on move one, playing as a Danish Gambit, the one thing you do teach them is always to push this pawn to D5 at some point. Mm -hmm. I know, I don't, I mean, maybe maybe the kids that you're teaching, they don't play E5 on move one, but I feel like coaches, that's one of the biggest, that's probably the single most important responsibility that they should teach these, teach their students when their students play E5. Um, is these gambit lines where you all, almost always push the pawn to d5. Yeah, I... I mean, I, I guess probably most of your students play the Karo Khan, right? Because that's, that's probably what you teach them. Karo, or... King's Indian, yeah, I try to avoid e4, e5. And even those that do play e4, e5... is not an e4 opening, Lavi. I know, but the setup, I'm saying like... Ah, play... okay, ah, okay, 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 okay. I see, I see the setup. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair, okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I... I really like this, and I think it throws a lot of people off. So, 
Yeah, I think uh, it's probably upper legit. It's not solid. It's I don't think it's legendary at the intermediate level. I, I think it's upper upper tier. I think it's like probably at the top of legit. Okay. Top um, of legit. Let's go. Okay, so next up we have the Dragdorf, which is let's let's see. Dragdorf, of course, E4, C5. Knight f3. Uh, there are a couple ways you can play it, but let's say d6. And what you do is, um, essentially you combine. So knight orf is usually pawn. Here you create this, uh, I don't know what what the structure is called. Um, um, or the other way you can normally play against Sicilian is to play the dragon, which of course this is the, the constellation Drago, um, uh, which is just, you know, these five pawns in a row. So you can play the dragon or you can play the knight orf usually, but sometimes you get really creative and um, you combine both the knight orf structure, but then you also play the dragon as well. So it becomes the, the, the drag dwarf. So what do you think? Uh, I, I mean, you might as well just play the accelerated dragon, right? If you want to play G6. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a bit more experimental. I think you have to have a really good game sense to like mess about. Uh, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at this level. Okay, I, I kind of agree. I think it's just too much mixing of ideas. There, it isn't straightforward or practical. Um, I think it's just maybe not. Okay. Um, okay, so next up we have the Dutch defense. What do you think of the Dutch defense? Uh, like it a lot. Uh, it's. It, I think we have to put it right next to the bird, Hikaru, because... As long as you're aware of the gambits and the really aggressive, uh, whoa, you, you, you yeah. seem, you seem perplexed. Oh, I'm okay. Well, shocked. So you think it goes higher? I think it's very, very risky to play at the really level. Yeah, because I feel like every like, for example, probably from the time that I was maybe like uh, fifteen hundred till I was about master, maybe even a little bit above master. Uh, since I was not a D four player, the one thing I knew about D four F five. Was it just play e4 and play f4 knight c3 and play the staunt and gambit? Um, yes. Yeah, so what I was gonna say is, as long as you know, what I always tell people, like anytime I play uh, a, a sub and they play the Dutch, I test mm -hmm. their staunt and gambit, and then if they don't know it, I tell them you have to know it. Uh, right. More often than not, they don't know it. So if you learn it, I think it's fine. I don't see the problem i think it's still i mean you have to know it very very well though because like it's after knight f6 bishop g5 okay you have yeah. to know exactly what to do though to, to it. you need to know like you know this stuff <laughs> it still by the way is can be very very dangerous like, yes there, there yeah. even if them. you know it yeah 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 so i i don't okay. know to me i don't know like you you think it's very good that's interesting like i'm very scared of because like like i said the only thing i knew against it um was to play the gambit was just to play e4 on move two and then knight c3 so i don't know maybe kids these days i don't know i don't know you you tell me love because you're the one with more modern day experience i, I i'm 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 scared because this is going on your youtube in the future and some I, i'm I, I read those comments sometimes and they are not very nice <laughs> Uh, they're they're mostly nice, but they're gonna be like that. What? How is this garbage? I have a ninety percent win rate in the Dutch. So... True, true. I don't know. I mean, <sighs> I, I worry. I do worry a lot about the Staunt and Gambit. I mean, I think it's the the biggest issue with playing the Dutch. If they don't play the Staunt and Gambit, however, I think it is pretty straightforward, and you do just kind of get the position you want. And so with I don't that, know what the opening mean? is. I don't know. I mean, I. <laughs> I think it's fine. I mean, I'm gonna put it bottom tier legit. I think. Okay. I think I think it's probably okay, but it's I think it's bottom tier legit. All right. Um, okay. Next up, we have the elephant gambit, which I believe is e4, e5, knight f3, d5, right? Yeah. It's, yes. It's yes. 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 Gambit. Yeah. Um. So, what do you think, Lavi? I think it's it's kind of a fake gambit, right? Like you, you don't really get much of an initiative here, even if white like really mm -hmm. messes up. Isn't that the whole, like, even if white like does this and <laughs> um, Yeah, even if it's after 95, queen d5, d4, it's still, it's not really a gambit per se, so. Yeah, and if you don't know what you're yeah. doing, you can like lose, you know? Right. <laughs> like you can literally lose the game. So it's a terrible opening in my opinion. I don't, I, I really, there's I no agree. point. I, th I think it's garbage. Yeah. I don't even need to go further than that. Okay, so next up we have the English opening. What's the picture of it, by the way? Oh, the elephant? Yeah, what is it? Like what Um I don't 
Actually, I don't. I don't know. Someone chat can tell me. I. But the white stripe. Oh, how does chat know that? Like, well, how I mean, know- I, it's a white stripe. So what is there? Some elephant song? I, I I don't get it. Is there what's what? You guys are crazy. You guys it's are an insane. album cover. I get that, but what's it have to do with an elephant? Oh, it's called White Elephant. Oh. oh, that's the album is the white elephant. Okay, so we've got the white elephant and we've got the black lion. <laughs> yeah, white elephant and black lion. Now, I don't know. I don't know what that says about. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's um, let's uh, let's right, get back. We're, to we're in the states. Up... We're in the states. We we might get in trouble. All right. Next up. What's is, the next uh, opening? The English opening. Um. Okay. So the English opening, which is Pond to see four. What do you think? Um, and of course, fantastic photo for this one. Uh, English, uh, mother flonker, do you speak it? Yeah. Um, it's more mysterious than the Catalan, in my mm-hmm. opinion. It's the same problem. You get a position and it's weird, the plans that you have to go for, right? Right, so, right. No, I, I agree. And I also think the danger is that it's one of these like sort of close to a hypermodern opening where it's like, Let's say your opponent plays pawn to e6. You you kind of have to transpose it back into some other setup. If you just try to play like a normal English, black's going to push the pawn and take the center very, very quickly. So yeah. it's like you kind of have to play d4 and then play Catalan or you have to play like knight c3, you know, something like this and go back into queen's gamp decline. So I don't I don't know what to make of it. It's it's I like the idea if you can guarantee your opponent's going to push a pawn to e5 or c5, then you get to go g3, bishop g2 um but otherwise i think you have to know other openings and i feel like at the intermediate tier it's probably a bit too much objectively i think so too like why like just put the pawn in the center of the board like what are you doing stop trying to be like edgy <laughs> right yeah <laughs> just play I, think, e4, d4. I think probably so. it's just a it's maybe not is where i would put it i think just maybe right. not because it, it's completely fine but i think it's just too much information yeah just exactly you know talk your friend out of playing c4 but if they mm-hmm. want to do it all right you have my blessing fine right okay so what else do we have we have the england gambit um mm. which is uh what, what what is the england it's just it's d4 e5 d4 e5 okay and d takes by the way again since the chat knows better than us who is this dude this uh this image who's this dude no idea um but the thing that you're going for here is obviously this cheese um okay oh it's it's robert england okay 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 all right okay yeah we covered Sorry, let, this let, let me let me slow it down because i was on the other other window so yeah so you're going sure. for this idea right mm-hmm. so you hit the pawn white guards it with the bishop um yeah and then you check and then you go here of course if white takes the bishop you just take the rook in the corner um and then you trade and go queen c1, which is checkmate. Uh, it's, again, it's something where one line wins by force. And if your opponent is not an idiot or has blundered this before and found a antidote, they're not going to mess this up again. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's tricks only. And I mean, it's... I agree. Like, learn a real opening. Come on. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Now, where in tricks only does it go? Um, I mean, it's probably more legit than the Banco. Because at least more... you can win. Yeah, yeah, it's more legit. I think it's just top of tricks. Okay. I think it's top of tricks. Um, the picture is old Gotham. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Oh, Relax. that's that's me in the future. That's me now, dude. I mean, to come on. What are you doing? Um, that's how I look now. Okay. Um. All right. So oh. next up, we have um. We have the Evans Gambit. Yes. Uh, (laughs) Yes. Okay. Next up, we have the we have the Evans Gambit. Okay. So the Evans Gambit, of course, uh, is pawn to e4, pawn to e5. Sorry, pawn to e5. Knight of three, knight to six, bishop c4, bishop c5, and now pawn to b4. Usually, black takes and white goes c3, gains a tempo, and tries to build this big center immediately. With pawns on e4 and d4 so what do you think levy um number two legendary behind my karakhan only because i have a thing for the karakhan 
but otherwise it's the it's the it's the greatest yeah i kind of agree i'm, I'm readjusting yeah i think yeah I'm just it's higher than legendary, legendary. yeah i know something... I, I think it's just it is the best opening i agree uh, so. There's a lot of gambits you can play in E4, E5. This one is le it's legitimate gambit. It's played at the highest of levels, mm -hmm. and it has the blessing of the engines. And objectively speaking, there's nothing really wrong with it. If Black knows, what I mean, doing, I, I wouldn't say it has the blessing of the engines necessarily. But if Black is better, Black is slightly better. And again, it's played at the highest levels. I don't think you could argue that any of the other, like Karo Khan, is generic and it's of course played at the highest levels. But like. Close to and Alapin are not really played at the highest level. So um, I think certainly it, it goes it goes up there. I think it's it's probably uh yeah, it, it's just it's legit. It's legit. And I mean like e even I've played it and won some critical games. Like I think when I won the US championship in uh two thousand and fifteen, I think I beat Robert Hess with it in the first round. So um, it is definitely a, a very legit opening. Uh, when you say legit, you 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 put it in legendary though. Is it, right? Sorry, but I just mean in general terms of like right. the grandmaster level. I, I'm not talking intermediate, but yeah, it's, right, it's right. a great opening. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 amazing. And if you pair it with like, uh, for example, in w what I did, and we have this gambit in the future, I made like a, a, a an Evans gambit video. I was like, look, if they play this, you can enter fried liver, but mm -hmm. uh, you can also play the Nachmanson gambit, which will show right, later, right. But, Totally, yeah. You know, this thing is insane. <laughs> this thing is absolutely insane. So, all wait, right. Sorry, French defense wait, sorry, what? Knight C3? Yeah. Oh, I've never seen this. I've only seen this rookie one. Because I remember... Oh, that's in the future. A... Let's save that. Oh, save what? So so that Gambit, Knight C3, that's Nachmanson. That's like 10 into Okay, the okay, okay. Anyway, the point I was going to make was just, I remember this this line, like, I looked at this a little bit. Because now this you're, you guys like when I see certain openings, it, it jogs my memory to stuff from the past. So um, I remember when I was I think I was barely a GM. Um, was I a GM at this point or not? Um, I think I was. I've never been a GM. Uh, 2003. So maybe it, when did I become a GM? Yeah. So it was 2003. I was a, I was a grandmaster. Um, and I was playing my first U.S. championship. I knew my first round pairing. It was actually uh, against Jennifer Shahadi. I didn't know the color. But I remember looking at her openings and um, and sort of the two things that I that I prepared were uh, if she played played the the Rui Lopez, which is one of the openings that I kind of thought she might play. I would play the 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 Yanish opening. Levy, by the way, use the proper term. It's the Yanish, not the Schleeman. Um, what? I, I'm just uh, I'm wallowing in sadness at this conversation of uh, someone once becoming a grandmaster. Oh, oh okay. All. Anyway, um, but yeah. So I was, <laughs> just... and, and by the yeah. way, just to, I remember this so well because at the time, like since chess was much different, the way that I studied this opening was there was a chess-based magazine. It still exists, but with opening surveys and stuff where you look at the openings, mm -hmm. and um, that's where that's where I got this whole idea to play this uh, idea. Um, and then the other line that I thought John might play would have been D four takes Bishop C four. Uh, playing this like scotch game max max laying attack with knight f6 castles knight e4 rookie one d5 takes takes and knight c3 um yes. so so this is uh this this was the other line that i looked at so that just jogged my memory um now in that 2003 u.s chess championship i ended up playing john john with the white piece and it was an english opening so it was all irrelevant but i did study this um all this right it's terrifying so, as a beginner by the way like as an intermediate totally player, so totally really scary yeah so so all right, um, French. Okay, let's let's move on. No French though. This is the same. Oh no, sorry. It's the, sorry. It's not the advanced. You're right. Okay. So next up uh, is the French defense. Where, where what do you think um, in general terms about about the surrender surrender defense with e6 and d5 for black? Uh, I think it belongs in maybe not because it's not again. It's not terrible, uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like what? Like what are you doing? <laughs> yeah no i mean i i think it's playable but i think it's it's quite hard um because in general especially in like the advanced variations you end up with the slight square bishop that's mm -hmm. locked behind all these pawns now chat we're talking at intermediate level we're not talking at the grandmaster level at the grandmaster level it's a whole different story but at the intermediate level i think it's very hard because you end up with this bishop that's stuck behind these light square pawns so um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where it goes. Like, I think it's playable. 
I don't I don't really have a good 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 view. What do you think, Lavi? Look, no amount of uh, good editing on an Anish Giri promo video is gonna make me convinced that this is the this is this is like just play C six. The bishop at least gets out, you know. Like it's it's the same. True. Yeah. You, you don't close down the diagonal. This is this is a good point. But obviously, as you move up the rating ladder, if you know what you're doing, you know the mm -hmm. theory, you know the ideas. It's a good opening. It's it. Look, no one's saying it's it's a bad opening. It's it's got a meme reputation. Um, but I'm right. just it's like a thing. I'd be like, come on, man. Like, what are you doing? Why do you play the French? Mm -hmm. but if you want to so for me it's maybe not it, it, we're bottom tier legit yeah i mean i think i don't think you can say it's maybe not i think it's probably bottom tier it's definitely better than dutch should be better than the birds i mean well i mean yeah i, I think it's I, it's it's like middle middle to bottom of uh of legit is where i would okay. put it um <laughs> hafu so. do not be mad at us i know that hafu plays the french so Right, but I mean, I think the French is a very sketchy choice by 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 Hafu because I I think you can end up in a lot of trouble very quickly when you play the French. I I mean, mind you, mind you, you have to have some idea, but I, I do feel like it's it's a questionable opening choice in in my opinion. Um, so so we'll see, we'll see. But I mean, she might win the tournament with it, so we we shouldn't speak too soon. So. Okay. All right, next, next, um, next up is the fried liver, which actually, speaking of Hoff, who should have occurred in her game yesterday against XQC. So yep. it's, it's pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. And if black plays bishop c5, you can play the most legendary opening of all time with the Evans gambit. But black can also play knight f6 to continue the development. And now what you play is knight to g5. You hit the uh, pawn on f7 with a knight and the bishop. Mm -hmm. D5 takes... Black takes, and now you play the move, knight takes f7, uh, yeah. takes, queen f3 check, hit the knight, hit the king, um, king e6, knight c3. Again, black can't move the knight because the king would be taken. Knight e7, and now after pawn to d4, I believe, uh, according to modern day theory, this is just winning by force for white, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, what do you think? Yeah, Bobby? yeah, people have been, uh, like, uh, when I when I gave a lesson to Tirzu, I showed him the 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 uh, the fried liver, and I was like, look, man, if you're going to get their king into the center of the board, you're going to win. Mm -hmm. The problem is that while it wins at the beginner level a lot, you can cheese people, people are going to learn d5, knight a5. It's not the most complicated thing in the world. Right, exactly, yeah. You just have to learn it, and... Frankly speaking, if or you, play... or 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 Levy, you can be you can be a real boss. You can be a Traxler? real warlord and play the Traxler like ah yeah. yes, like Bishop C five. Um, although I think this stuff. is supposed to be. I don't even know what the current state of affairs is on this with computer computers, but it's uh it's very very messy and very complicated. So yeah, I, I love the Traxler, but yes. but I, I will say actually one thing just slightly off topic. Um. Even though he messed it up a couple moves later, I was very, very impressed that XUC found D5 mm -hmm. and Knight takes D5. Because when, when I saw his occur on the board, I actually thought he was gonna, just going to end up losing his pawn on F7 and just be losing the yep. game immediately. So I was very, very impressed that on demand he was able to find this. Um, and and uh, even though he lost later, the fact that he saw this was very, very impressive. Yeah, and he had a good position. That's the that yeah. that's the craziest thing is that I think I think it, uh, the game went like this, this, this. I mean, bishop takes d five yeah, is just yeah. much worse for mm -hmm. for for white. Right. It's uh, it didn't happen, but it is what it is. Uh, right. Fried liver is it's a you know it's legit. You don't lose if you if they know what they're doing, but it's mm -hmm. mm, you know it's it's more cheesy. So bottom tier legit or very high. Maybe not, I would say. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's one of those things that can happen. Um, so, yeah. Like, I, I think it's, uh, I think maybe not. I think it's it's too much. Like, yeah, it's too much asking for the Fagatello. So, I think it's maybe not. Somewhere in the middle of maybe not. Okay. Or is it tricks right. only? Eh, it's, no, it's, it's better than tricks only. I think it's maybe not. Um, so the the yeah all right so next up we have the uh gucci piano um which i think is like very do we have italian let me just check we don't have italian right so it's just uh so it's just it's just it's just this right just this one so then i think we we have to cover it from the broader perspective and not just what we looked at um in the previous tier makers because the previous ones when people asked me about why i said it was garbage it's because we were looking at the specific one 
uh, with pawns to c3 and d4 um, playing straight in the center of the board. Whereas you can also play the, the Gucci Pianissimo, which is like the slow version of it, um, mm -hmm. where you play like pawn to d3 here. So, so like, so like it, it's just like you can play the piano or you can play the pianissimo with pawn to d3 here. Um, so, so yeah, I know you guys heard slack. Sorry about that. Um, but since we're covering, I guess, sort of a bit of everything, what do you think, Lovey? I mean, if you have the option to play the Evans and you play C3, I think you're just a terrible person. So you should, yeah, mm. I mean, this is, <laughs> this, is a, this is a fair point. Yeah, this is, this is a fair point. You True. have the most legendary opening mm -hmm. as an option. You don't play it like. Right, right. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you, what, what do you think, Lavi? I'll let you take this one away. I think this is, I think this is, this is terrible. I think this is garbage. You, you don't play B4? Like, really? I mean, come on. What are we doing here? I'm more angry at the person for not playing it. It's a perfectly legitimate thing to play, but like, are you serious? Like, what are you doing? It's like, Picar, I'll give you an example. You get on a plane, someone offers you an upgrade to business class, and you say, no, I'd rather sit with everybody else. Like, what, <laughs> what the hell is wrong? Like, fine, I respect it. You're still going to get to where you're going, but like, come on, man, what is wrong with you? Like... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's pure garbage in this case. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of think uh, I kind of think it's like um, I think I'm gonna put it maybe not. I, I don't okay. think I don't think, I think that's too far saying pure garbage. So I'm just gonna put maybe not. Okay. I think maybe not. Cause I, I I feel like it's just too yeah. It's it's not you know it doesn't seem quite right. It is is what I would say. So I think I think maybe not, um, but yeah. Um, Somebody so. got very offended. There's no way this goes in garbage. No, no I, I I don't I don't think it's garbage. I, I I don't think so. Okay, next up we have the Le Grand Prix opening, mm. um, which of course, as everybody knows, is pawn to e4, pawn to c5, knight c3. No matter how black responds, whether knight or one of the pawns up in the center, you just play pawn to f4. Um, and you bring the knight and the two pawns out. So, so what do you think, uh, Levy? I like this a lot. I it, what's the logic of not putting this in legendary if the closest Sicilian is in legendary? Is there any obvious drawback to this? I mean, I love this again, and this this I think shows the difference between between chess um, in like modern days versus when I grew up. Like this was the, the defense I played against the Sicilian literally from the time it was probably like fifteen hundred again until maybe like 2300 at least master so um i played i played the grand prix non-stop it was my go-to against the sicilian only setup i played against the sicilian by the way um it's it's all that i played so like yeah. and i mean i guess that shows the difference like just just to do a sidebar but but one of the big differences between chess when i was sort of growing up versus modern day is like all you needed was one setup so, like, against the Karo Khan, for example, my only setup, all I knew how to play was bishop here and play, like, pawn here, bring the bishop, bring the knight, and castle the king. Mm -hmm. This was all that I played. Only setup against the Karo Khan. I didn't play e5 or, or anything else. This was the only setup that I knew. Um, or, like, for example, against the Sicilian. Only setup I knew how to play was Grand Prix. That's, this is all that I played. So I had, like, one opening setup against a lot of these different different um openings that black would reply with uh whereas now i feel like a lot of even kids who are who are like intermediate or, or sort of strong mm -hmm. amateurs they play like multiple variations right levy yeah they do uh, you yeah. see this a lot also in in the nationals for example there's a lot of kids from a few states you all know each other's games you know each other's chess.com accounts so now they have anonymous chess.com accounts but round to round the level of yeah. prep is crazy. You see a kid played something. Oh, cool. We play him three rounds. Oh, boom. What did he play? Let's prepare. That kid yeah. has to now switch something up. It's nuts. Yeah. So. See, and, and I would say, you know, it's interesting from the standpoint that I think in some ways that actually hurts the understanding. The players will get the, get the ranking regardless. So they'll keep improving. But I think it hurts the understanding because they don't fundamentally understand the ideas. Whereas like when I was growing up and I played this Grand Prix, like literally there were just ideas within this setup and within the structure where the pawns and the knights are. Um, so it's like I learned all the ideas, e even e even if the opening itself isn't great. I knew the ideas. And I think that's one thing that's very important is to understand the ideas 
And when you're always switching around and playing different sorts of things, you don't necessarily understand the ideas. You're just trying to put the piece on different squares. So, so it's a preparation and stylistic thing. Yeah, plus like preparing for the Grand Prix is really difficult. If Black knows the critical plan, which is either striking in the center or A6, B5, the best that happens is just a complicated game. I mean, if you can... Yeah, well, I mean, that's the kind of thing. Is like what, what I learned was a couple of things. And I will also say big uh, big shout out to my stepfather. He's probably not watching right now, although I'll check. Let me see. Is he watching? Let's see. Is he watching? He is not watching. Okay. Um was like I literally I can I can tell you like in a nutshell what I learned. The first thing that I learned was if you can get like one of these structures, for example, these double pawn structures this mm -hmm. way, um, it's very good for white. Or like for example, if black was e6, you play this, um, and you go like this line with queen e2. Um, mm, yes, you know, this, <laughs> I played this. <laughs> yeah, and I mean I think nowadays it's considered dubious for white, but at the time it was fine, you know. Or like. For example, there are other lines like black can go like e6, you play f4, d5, sorry, not d6, d5, you take, check, and then if black blocks the wrong way, you go check, you protect, uh, you hit the king, and then you win a pawn next move. And um, like it's just very straightforward, simple ideas, I think, uh, that that like really I was very fortunate that, that I learned these these ideas and sort of the setup within this position because um, I, I don't think I would be as good as I am now if not for that. Um, so so yeah i mean i just I, re I remember like all these different these different sorts of uh setups and it was just like a lot of fun so grand prix for me is certainly certainly uh something that i think goes in legendary 100 percent it goes in legendary yeah. i i think for sure probably Absolutely legendary behind Karo khan yeah i think it's probably third i, th I think because i think Karo khan is just such a sound opening and it's on move one against the most obvious reply so i think that has to be right below evans so that's that, that's what I would say. Okay, so next up we have the Grob defense, which is one G four. So what do you think, Levy? <laughs> uh it's 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 trick only. I mean, right? There's like this 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 thing where you you get like the the trick on C four and, mm -hmm. and Bishop B seven, but like yeah, it's like this and then this and then Queen B three. Oh, the funny thing is, even now when I played this and when I played this in the uh, in the speed run, it's actually mm -hmm. not great. Like even if you get your trick to work with like this and takes after ninety seven, it's not clear at all. Yeah. So, so it's it's not good. I mean, it could even go into garbage. Just just come on. I think it's tricks only. I don't I I don't okay. think it's pure garbage. Do you? I don't know. At intermediate level, I don't think it's pure garbage. Okay. Yeah. I think it's like bottom tier kind of of tricks only. Okay, okay, so next up we have the Grunfeld opening, which of course, as everybody knows, is pawn to d4, knight to 6, c4, g6, knight to c3, trying to take the center of the board, and uh, black plays pawn to d5 here. Mm. No. What do you think, Lavi? No, this is, this is, this is really, we talked about this a lot. Uh... This is not something that you should be playing. It's it's a really really good opening. It's just just far too complicated. Uh, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. I still don't want to touch it. So yeah, I, I mean, I I think we've we've been over this several times already. I completely agree. I think uh, the Grunfeld defense. It's a great opening. It's probably the best opening at the grandmaster level. Like if you're a top tier chess player, it's probably the mm -hmm. best opening. I say anything below Grandmaster, don't play it. Even when I was a Grandmaster, uh, like 2,500 level, I got smashed. When I became a Grandmaster, I tried to play it. When I was strong, I am a weak Grandmaster. I played it all the time. I don't think I won. I mean, I, maybe I won some games somewhere, but I just got smashed. Anytime I played it, it's just like really, really brutal. So um, I, I think, I don't know. I think it's I think it's garbage, actually. What do you think? I think for this level, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. It might be, maybe not. Like you're 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 not gonna lose if you play it. You're just you're not gonna know what the hell you're doing, and that's right, right. So maybe not bottom tier. Maybe not. It's not like completely terrible. You don't like lose because because some of the stuff is terrible. It's garbage for me. All right, it's garbage. All right, for me it's Inco garbage. Incoming angry YouTuber in three. <laughs> right. <laughs> What do you mean it's garbage? What do you mean? I just, I, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's garbage. I, I mean, I feel, I honestly think as far as the, uh, I mean, I just like, like I said, like when I played it, when I was like 2450, 2500, like I am becoming a GM, 
I I literally just got hammered. When I played against these guys who were like 25, 50 GMs, like I just lost. And it was like, what am I even doing wrong? I would just lose games. So like I have I have no uh deep affinity for the for the Grunfeld. Wow. Peter Swidler somewhere just twitched uncontrollably and he doesn't know why. <laughs> what, what they say about my opening? What yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's playable. I just, I think it's just, I really do, I do, I do think it's one of those openings where you just get a bad position, you give up too much. I mean, maybe it's not garbage, I don't know. But anyway, whatever, let's keep going. So next up we have the Hillbilly Attack. So as we know, the world's strongest man, Hathor Julius himself, played the Hillbilly the other day oh. um, against... He... I think it's uh, against Wagamom, if I remember Yeah, but he did it by accident, because right before I taught him the exchange... Okay, okay. I was like, but, play the exchange, you know? Uh, but he played this, so. Right. So, <laughs> usually it goes, what, D4 and then Queen H5? Or is it it's Queen, Queen H5, H5, right? Yeah. Um, and you I try to be a hillbilly and attack immediately. Maybe bring the knight out and attack the pawn in the center of the board. What I don't understand is why it's called the hillbilly, because hillbillies, do they attack? Like, is it, like <laughs> what, what, aren't hillbillies, like, chill, random? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but... It, it's not wonderful. You can win if black is not careful, but it's, uh, it's an interesting <laughs> one. Uh, sorry, I just sorry, I just saw a comment. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what, what do you think, Lovey? What do you think? Uh, I, I would put it in, in a may, in, in a maybe not category, but it, it could be very, very bottom tier legit from my experience playing this against uh, club level players. Yeah, I think it's bottom tier legit for me. I think, I think, it, I think it's kind of legit because usually so what's going to happen is you're going to end up like, it'll be something like G6, you come back and then, then after knight six knight c 3 you're going to get the pawn back on E4 and play in, um, play in the center of the board. And it's even material. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's I think it's bottom tier legit. I do, um, at the at intermediate level. You you so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. I'll let you actually. I it. you know I I will too. Actually, it feels like a good time to take a short break. So all right, cool. Drinking like this 48 ounce thing of of liquid. So Me yeah, too. all right. So I think yeah, we'll take a short break and we'll come back in in one second. You guys, outstanding. All right, you back, Lovey? I'm back. Thank you. Or yeah. Good. <laughs> Sorry, I just said thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Uh, by the way, someone in my chat asked me why I struggle so much with the Grunfeld. Well, I'll give you guys one example very briefly before we get back. So there was a strong, there were a couple of players I played against quite a few times um, when I had just become a GM. I'm thinking of Mr. Swes for the five gifteds. Um, and the, the lines, there was this one guy, this Victor Mikulevsky, is a uh, more of a prominent uh, chess author now than a player. But I always ran into trouble in the following opening. So he, I would play as Grunfeld. He would go queen b3. Ruska sistema. Bishop g7, e4, castles, knight f3. And this is this is called the Russian variation um, of the Grunfeld. And here there are a couple lines. So when I first looked at this opening, it was probably in the late 90s, like 98, 99. Around this time, there were a lot of games played with a6 between Gary Kimovich Kasparov and Peter, Peter Yuri Savidler. Um, I know that's not his middle name, but I just felt like I'd, I'd throw, in, throw in a middle name anyway. Um, but they, they played a lot of games with like this E5 line with like this knight E7 and H4. Um, I think most of the games Kasparov was white, but they, they had a couple games like this. There were games between like Kasparov and um, Kasparov and uh, I think Kramnik as well and Leko. So there were a lot of these games with like this A6 setup. And um, because I was waking up every morning and watching the, the very mediocre webcam and then just on one of these chess sites seeing the games, around 2000 or 2001, Kasparov actually switched from playing pawn a6 to playing this knight a6, knight a6 line. So this is actually a line I started playing a lot. Um, and I remember I had a couple games against Viktor Mikulevsky where it would go like, it would be pretty standard takes. Um, and I think the problem is there's like a move order trick here where... If I recall correctly, you're supposed to play like rookie eight, and it's like if bishop e3, you go queen b6. If they go like rookie one or something, I think you go bishop f5 and knight e4. Um, and so I remember Kasparov started playing this, so I tried to play both this pawn a6 move and this knight a6 move, and I would just lose games. Like I lost at least two or three games to Mikulevsky in the set in the system, and um, 
I think it's just lack of space, lack of an obvious idea, and then the move orders, and it just, it never really worked out for me. Now, it's not to say I couldn't play the Gruenfeld and figure it out now, but that, that was just one of the biggest issues I had, um, was like that. Having said that, however, I do also have fond memories. So, um, I also had this in the first United States Chess Championship that I ever won, um, in 2005 so i i believe in this position against gregory kaidan of the uh, grandmaster he's also a prominent coach now from kentucky uh i played bishop to d7 i believe it was the eighth round of the event uh, it was the seventh or eighth round it was a game where i had to win and um i played this bishop d7 a6 line and i actually won with black against kaidan and by winning this game it put me in the position where in the last round against um against Ildar Ibrahimov, who, who, who I played, I was able to beat him and force a tiebreaker against Alexander Shapunsky, which I would go on to win and win my first U.S. championship in 2005. So it's not all bad memories, wow. but mainly it's bad memories. Wow, that Ildar Ibrahimov, that's a guy. Where is that guy? Uh, I think he went back to Russia. Okay, that is an interesting life decision. Um yeah, Ibrahimov was really, really strong. That's a, that's that's such an OG field. You're yeah, Malinsky's but speaking of Ibrahimov, also, uh, like, he is the one guy I believe that I I played the New York State Ch Chess Championship against him, and I believe it was 2006, and I actually played the Danish Gambit against him. Um, did you, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and that's the game you said did not go well. He no, played. I lost that game. <laughs> yeah, so it's bad memory. You that's so yeah. many different games and openings against That's, different people. Yeah, when you spend your whole life playing a game, it it, it happens. Um, you, you yeah, you sometimes you remember all these random random games. It's like you know, like I don't know why I don't know why my mind works like this. But for example, with the Grand Prix, um, I, I remember like this this line with f4 e6 and i3 d5 takes him takes and bishop b5. Um, when I was really young, like nine years old, I think I think I was like nine years old. I, I was playing against the pocket computer all the time. So I forget, it was like called a, a mock three or something. It was like this pocket thing where you take the piece and you peg mm -hmm. it, you put it in each square. If you guys oh, know. Oh, okay. I mean. Yeah, I know what you're, yeah, I never. It, it has it, a I'm... hole with the peg. So you take the piece and you move it from like one square to the other one. Um, okay, boomer, totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. But yeah, you take it out of one square because there's, there's like the peg. And you put it, you peg it in the next square, and so forth. Um, and I remember I I had a couple of games with with this position against that uh against that computer computer as well. Obviously, times have changed, you guys. Now you don't you don't need to do anything. It's just like you play on like your actual computer. But I just I remember these weird sorts of things. Can't relate, old timer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally all right you guys um yeah it's, it's like that game at cracker barrel exactly big x exact same concept um anyway all right let's get back to the uh to the tier maker so hippo hippo the hippo opening so all right you guys what do you guys think of the hippo opening this is where you, you try to create the hippo you go like pawn to g3 bishop to g2 let's just say e6 um and you essentially try to create like what are called like the hippo teeth i guess something like uh Something like this. This is the essential setup of the hippo. Um, I guess these are like hippopotamus teeth or something. I, I don't really understand the naming, but the hippo is where you just you put all your pieces um, on the second rank like this. To me, this is a maybe not opening because with the plethora of opening choices that you have to play, if this is what you settle on, mm -hmm. like again, you know, what are you doing? Like if all airline tickets were the same price, but you chose Spirit. Like, you hate yourself. I mean, there's no way around it. No reclining seats, no Wi-Fi. Only thing you can get is water, and even that you have to pay for. Like, what are we doing here? I mean, <laughs> seriously. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay, Levy. <laughs> I've actually never flown Spirit Airlines, so I can't. I can't. I have. <laughs> I, I, you know, I know, Hikaru, that you don't know there's other classes uh, besides business, but... <laughs> okay, Levy. Okay, okay. All right. I'm gonna be honest. I stole that line from chat because the first time I went on an airline rant, uh, somebody in my chat was like, "I don't think Hikaru knows that economy class exists," and I totally stole that. So credit to that guy. But <sighs> okay, 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 okay. Yes, uh, economy class does exist. I usually do fly economy class, you guys. Um. So so yes. Thank you for that, Levy. Well, I have to flex on your behalf as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. 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 By the way, those of you guys who are wondering, usually business is actually not like if I was really worth forty five million dollars, I would fly in first class, not business class, because the proper airlines like Lufthansa have a have economy, business, and they also have a first class. Um, I'm right. learning. I did not know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They they actually they changed that because like when, when I was growing up, like it was just there. It was just called first class. There was like economy mm -hmm. and what was first class. But now they've like the airlines have actually changed or something. So so yeah. Um, all right. So back to the the tier, tier maker. Um, <laughs> TSM private chat. Maybe like, not for hippo. Want. What do you think? What's that? Hippo. Maybe yeah. Not, so, or... so hippo. I think it's probably just maybe not somewhere. Somewhere in the. I, I mean, maybe it's in. I think it's upper end. Maybe not though. I think it's upper end. Does so... the bomb cloud get dethroned? Does the the chief of maybe not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a cute avatar. Yeah, it is. I, I like the hippo. It's cute. All right. I've I've actually seen hippos. I saw a hippo when I was in Africa like two years ago. Is uh, they're they're big, they're very very big. Never seen a hippo. Are hippos mm. at like zoos, or you got to go to safaris to see a hippo? You probably can see them at zoos. I'm guessing. I mean, I was on a safari. That's that's why I saw it. But yeah, it's like they're really they're really really gigantic. Um, they're and yeah, it was just like it was like sitting in the water. Um. All right. Okay. So next up, we have the Jerome Gambit. Um. Uh, so let's 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 focus on on the Jerome Gambit. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. uh, pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, bishop takes f7, king f7, um, knight takes pawn, knight takes knight, queen h5. What do you think, Lobby? Uh, I don't completely hate it. Uh, we've talked about this a lot. This this really throws a lot of people off. Uh, at the same time, if in this position, again, you are declining the opportunity to play the Evans Gambit and instead you're going for the Jerome, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, it's, it's probably just a maybe not for me. It's obviously not solid. It's completely refuted. And the refutation isn't like completely insane. The refutation of the Nachmansen, which we'll see in a second, is completely insane. Okay. Uh, the refutation of this is not like crazy, crazy, crazy. So uh, it's not good. It's, it's probably a low tier, maybe not, or a tricks only. Okay. I mean, I agree with you, but I will add, I did win two games with it against, uh, against a German grandmaster who was rated 20, 2800 the other day. Just in your clear. speed run? Yeah, yeah. What, who, which grandmaster? Uh, Kolars. Dimitri, Dimitri Kolars. His, his username, I think, is just Dimitri or something. You beat Kolars with this? Yes. Dude, <laughs> Kolars, like, what? Isn't he like the pride of Germany? He's supposed to be the, what? Yeah, he. No, I mean, he's legitimately good. Yes, he he is legit good. Yeah. All right, he trash talked me once. So, hey, my 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 man over here has got my back. That's how friendships work. <laughs> you trash talk me, and Hikaru gets you. So. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> so, fun story about Kalars. I ran into Kalars at Pro Chess League Finals with the German team. Uh -huh. And uh, a couple days prior, I had played him in Bullet. And I won like a few games. He's a much better player than me, but I won a few Bullet games. And he goes, when I, when I ran into him, he goes, oh, you're really fast with your mouse. You're a really good mouse player. And I was like, what the, f like, who's, what? <laughs> so, boom, Jerome Gambit 2-0. Hikaru's yep. got my back. I can talk all the trash I want. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, just keep beating them, okay? Just because otherwise they, mm -hmm. you know. Nice, <sighs> nice. Yeah, now, now you know that that clip is th this little bit is totally going to go into the speed run whenever whenever it's right. uploaded to YouTube. Um, Hi, Dimitri. Right. So, uh, right. So, Jerome Gambit. Um, yeah, for me, I think like I think it's tricks only because I don't think you lose by force. So, I, I think for me, it's like it's in tricks only. I can't believe you got you beat him two times, like straight up, or like you were dead yeah. lost the whole game. No, and no, no. I know. I, I mean, I, I like, I, I beat him. Let me, uh, what's his? Let, let me, let me find it. Uh, let me just open up a new tab. I'll, I'll, the second one, I think he got disconnected when it was messy, but the the first one, he was he, he just lost. Him. I checkmated him. Um, what is it? Let, let let me just find the game quickly, and we'll we'll just take a brief look at it. Okay, you guys. So we'll we'll take a brief look at this then. Um. All right, so yeah, so e4, e5, knight f3, knight 6 bishop c4, bishop c5, takes, 
queen h5, king e6, I checked here, king d6. He played this the second game, by the way, Levy, so it wasn't just the first game. The other time, we also had this. And then takes, and b4, because obviously if black takes, then you create the check, and you win the rook, like takes here, and then you just take, and you win the rook in the corner. So he went here, which would be six, I played d4. Now, I don't know, king e4 might be winning. I, I'm kind of curious, actually. Let me see, I'm sure it's just winning. But he 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 got um he got kind of scared and he went back. And you just straight up beat another grandmaster in this position. Why not? I mean, his king is in the center of the board. It's very weak. So well, I now here. I feel less bad for any time we play, and I'm like I'm winning, and then I lose in five moves. Yeah, because like, see, Levy, because now I'm gonna check. I have e5, like knight e4. There's knight e4, and like rook f5. Just imagine training your entire life and being like the next generation of a grandmaster. Yeah, but see, Levy, I just won this game very cleanly. Like, just look at this. I mean, it's I am, I am watching. I'm, I'm, yeah. Seven. And easy. All right, like, stop. He's already dead. Stop. Stop. <laughs> just checkmate. I mean, just easy checkmate. Like, just, just game over. Okay. So. Well, I know what to do against him over the board if I ever play him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Um, yeah. So so let's just let, let me create a new board. I just wanted to yeah. I just wanted to show you that one. Um, I'll just invite you. He's probably just off enjoying his Monday somewhere. You know. Yeah, he probably is. not that someone who's watching is some some German guys gonna like Tom. You know, they're they're like go 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 check out. This. It's like he you know he cars. They're making there, fun like, of you on Hikaru's channel. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. This idiot guy got some chess, you know. So, all right. um, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That accent is actually really good. Um, <laughs> I'm practicing, you know. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. So, so where were we? Uh, let me go back to the tier maker. All right. So, so.